Let's have a quick one on the HT, the high tension side of um, the running engine for the B18 and B20. Um, I'm just going to go through changing the spark plugs, uh, considerations for the HT leads and the firing order of the distributor. Um, okay, so let's go in and do a spark plug change. Okay, so off with the HTs. And that one I felt just pull a bit up on there, so we'll just put that one back down again. And let's just get the cap out of the way. Okay, popping out the spark plugs, um, fairly large-ish ratchet needed, and that's a 13 16 inch spark plug socket, 13 16 Okay, when they come out, always have a look at what the electrodes look like. Um, that one's almost arguably running just a shade lean, but the important thing is they are all pretty much the same color and deposits on them, and those look nice to me. I'm happy with those. If you have one or more that looks distinctly different to the others, then you need to ponder why that is. Is oil getting into the um, cylinders and burning and making it messy? Or is two of the cylinders on a twin carb car running rich and the other two leaner? Um, myriad of reasons, but a difference between the spark plug electro colors is indicative of an issue that you need to be aware of and possibly action. Okay, we're going to throw these ones away um, and put in some brand new ones. We like NGKs. Um, why do I like NGKs? Well, it's that sort of motorbike background, I suppose, um, that they were always designed as a wasted spark. Uh, spark plug for the motorbikes and therefore I reckon uh, they're pretty resilient and uh, last well and perform well. Um, so that's why I use NGKs. Okay, I tend to pop them out two at a time. Uh, if you pop them out from the porcelain end, which they are always packaged in the same sense as the picture on the outside, then that means that the electro protector comes out like so. There we go. And I give them a squirt of WD and then in by hand. Just a couple of turns to get the thread clean. Now, when putting the sparks in, I strongly suggest you just use a stub wrench. And whiz him in. Get that first tension there. And then it's about half a turn on. There, like so. So I'm not putting it down with the strength of 10 men. That's with new spark plugs. So there we go. We've got the first tension. And about, yeah, that's pretty much half a turn on. There. There, exactly half a turn.
Now, if you're putting used spark plugs back in again, then you won't have that half turn take up. So you'll just have to feel it again. But as I say, if you're using a stub wrench like this, then you'll have it about right just by taking it down firmly with one hand. That's about the torque that you want. Okay, there we go. That's, uh, that's those. Now let's look at um, the rotation quickly. So um, B18 and B20 engines, the rotor rotates anti-clockwise anti-clockwise. So if I rotate the engine slightly awkward since I've put the wretched spark plugs in but it'll go there you go see anti-clockwise. Always do a careful visual inspection of the inside of your dizzy cap. Um, the typical failures are that this little carbon brush here in the center um, can get mangled so make sure that you can gently press that in against its spring so that looks happy. And then you're looking at the four electrodes here. Um, obviously you'll see some contact evidence on it. If it looks like there's a buildup of um, substance on the electrodes, then that clearly means it's time to replace your dizzy cap. Okay, we'll put that one back on again now. Uh, on this dizzy, it has a little projection up from the dizzy base, i.e. a recess here on the cap. Other distributors will be the opposite way round. You'll have a block here on the cap and a recess on the dizzy casing. So we match up that hole with that tongue. Just gently rotate it to make sure you're on squarely, which like that so that's now squarely on and then just pop up the two clips now HT leads um, always use high quality I think unless you are going for an absolutely original factory looking engine bay um, I wouldn't use copper uh, HT leads anymore um, uh, I would use high quality silicon. The sets you buy from us are the correct lengths. So the Volvo, actually this is slightly round one, um, the Volvo you set up such that number one is facing forward. This we're about a quarter turn out really so I should actually readjust the dizzy drive in the block to go back one tooth. Um, and our HT leads which are the ones we use on the Peking to Paris because of reliability and quality. There's the set with um, the short king lead for most of our cars. And they are designed to have the perfect length. So number one, so now let's go to the, the so now let's do the firing order. So we take number one there. Remember it's going anti-clockwise and the order is one, three, four, two. So there's one. So the next anti-clockwise is three. Next going anti-clockwise is four. And finally going anti-clockwise is number two. Take that back to there, back to there, back to there. And you can see how elegantly all four HTs have no excess HT uh, length to them. Uh, that means they are more reliable. Uh, the king lead out to here. And of course, if you're a P1800 owner, the right hand drive P1800s have the coil over on the right hand side of the engine bay and therefore need that horribly long HT lead, king lead down to the distributor. So that's um, if you have a right hand drive P1800 carburetted car. Okay, so that's it. Um, replacing the spark plugs. These days, um, unless 
somehow a spark plug has been dropped, you don't really need to set the plug gap. They all come as pretty much 0.6 mil out of the um, manufacturer. So hence you just put them in. Try only to use a small stub when uh, tightening them down and go to that first tension, then half a turn on will feel about right. The B18B20 Dizzy rotates anti-clockwise as you look at it and the firing order is one, three, four, two. That is as much as I need to say on the topic, I feel. Um, good. Thank you very much.